Greetings, Internet. This is Ninark, and welcome back to my series on making a platformer in Construct 2. Uh, this is the third part in a one million part series. So uh, if you haven't watched the first two, just go back and watch them, and then you will arrive exactly here, or at least fairly close to where we are. Uh, and here is, you'll see if you press play, our character, uh, he idles, he kind of breathes a little bit, he runs, he switches from left to right, he does a jumping animation. And stuff. So what we're going to be adding is a camera movement so that the camera will follow our character wherever he goes. And then we're also going to be adding a couple different types of platforms. Um, so yeah, so let's get started right away. Now the first thing I want to do is start using the grid. So if we go up to this uh, snap to grid thing, it will open up the ability to change our grid size. Now I'm going to put it at 1616. 16. Um, it's usually at 32, 32, but I accidentally just changed it a second ago, so ignore that. So make sure it's 1616. 16. Uh, for the sake of this tutorial, and then show grid. And uh, so now what you'll see is when we move our platform, it kind of, well, I mean, it doesn't kind of, it literally snaps to this grid. The problem is you see it's snapping to the middle, excuse me, it's snapping to the middle of uh, this grid and not directly on it. And that's because uh, if you click, if you double click on it and go back into our favorite sprite editor, there is a option over here on the left, it says set origin and image points, it's this little crosshairs. Now you'll see that it draws our uh, platform from the very center and uh, that's at 180 times or 180 by 8 uh, pixels, so 180 and then by 8. So I'm going to change this to 0, 0 and that's going to set it up to the top left corner and if you exit out of here now you'll see it snaps right to the grid inside these little boxes, it's pretty sweet. Um, and then our character will also snap, but we want him to be drawn from the center so that he's actually, uh, you know, in the scene correctly. All right, so yeah, uh, that doesn't really change anything if we press play. Uh, it's just so we can start getting started using other kind of platforms. All right, so the first thing we want to do is right click, insert new object, and then go down to sprite. This is going to be our first platform. It'll be a, a regular solid block platform. So I'm going to make it, uh, if you go up here, or actually, no, you, I almost did the wrong thing. If you go to the resize button over here, we're going to make it uh, 16 by 16, which is the side of our the size of our grid. Press OK, and let's zoom in and just fill it with a random color. Let's go with blue. Cool. Now we have this blue platform. Now it already has that problem. I totally forgot to go to this crosshairs over here and set it to 0 and 0. Press Enter. And now it's firmly on our grid. Now, you don't necessarily have to make this perfectly uh, on the grid like I'm doing right here. Uh, I just like that. Um, but I don't know. I guess you could just do whatever you want. So whatever. Do whatever you want. But this is better. So you should do this. All right. So this is our first solid block. So this one's pretty easy. We already know how to make it solid. We just go down over to the uh, uh, behaviors tab right here. Behaviors, add, edit, behaviors add, make it a solid, exit out, and now there's a nice little block platform right here for a character to land on. Now, you'll see this is a product of our laziness from earlier. Uh, he can walk really far off the block, and this is because the hitbox on our character is really big. So if you double click on it, go back to the sprite editor, and click down over here in the bottom left, there's this like sad sad uh, rectangle it's you know leaning over in despair it says set collision polygon so if you click on that you'll see that the collision polygon is huge it's very, it's way more than our actual character is so what we want to do is change these uh, so that it's more realistic so um, try to make them a reasonable uh, number like not something random so that uh, there's no problems and make sure your lines are actually uh, completely straight because you can have some collision problems if you if say you leave this at like an angle right here that can, it can affect some things so yeah I'm editing all these with the uh, arrow keys up here in the top left and I'm just doing that just to make sure it's a little more accurate uh, than if I was to just move them with the mouse so there we go everything's uh, set up let's actually move this back one nope wrong key da, 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 da. All right, there we go. So now, this is very important. Right-click. 
apply to all animations. Apply to whole animation will just affect our idle animation. If we apply it to only our whole animation, as soon as he switches to running or jumping, his hitbox will become completely different and many unhappy things happen. So apply to all animations is really important. It's going to even say, are you sure this is going to mess things up? But you're, it won't because we thought of that. All right, cool. So now when we press play, we'll see that he interacts with the block very uh, realistically. Well, I don't know. You can you can say realistically, I guess. It doesn't really matter. But anyway, yeah, he, he hits his head on the top. He can't like move past it on the left or the right on the side and he lands on top. So perfect. We have our own little uh, little platform here. Now, if you ever played a game like Mario, you'll know that there's some platforms where if you jump in from the bottom, you'll land on top of it and then you'll fall back onto the platform. And that's called a jump through block. And that's the block we're going to be making right now. So right click, insert new object, a new sprite, place it anywhere. Um, Let's resize this. So remember up here, uh, the resize button. Let's make the width 16, or actually, no, the width 32 and the height 16, um, or even 8. Let's go with 8. You can do whatever you want, literally. It doesn't matter at all. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to fill this up with a color yellow, this nice goldy yellow color. You must use that color. No, you don't. That was a stupid joke. Anyway, all right, so we have our jump through platform right here. Uh, I keep forgetting, go over here to the origin point and set it to zero, zero. Hmm. There you go, we have a nice little platform. Um, so this time for our behavior, we're not going to make it a solid because if we make it a solid, it'll be exactly like our other block where you can't jump through it at all. So what we want to do is add the behavior. It's the very first attribute and it's called jump through. Uh, we don't have to make it a solid, it already uh, react properly. So what happens is you can interact with this block, but only if you're a pixel above it. So uh, if you're underneath the block, you can jump right through it and land on top and it's great. And then, uh, yeah, there's other ways to do things like pressing down to fall through it. Um, we'll deal with that later. But uh, I think these two basic block functions can give you a lot of options to make your uh, platformer the way that you want it to be. Now, next time, we'll be doing enemies, maybe, I think? Or, uh, I don't know, I guess I guess enemies make sense. Oh no, coins. We're gonna do score and collectibles. Yeah, let's go with that. And then we'll do enemies after that. So yeah, uh, I hope you guys had a good time, learned a lot, uh, and I'll see you next time.